Oh, yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. It's time for everybody's favorite 47 and a half minutes. That's right, it's the TN 80s hour power hour. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, where you, you the friend, the friend of the channel has the opportunity to, to get yourself publicly known. That's right. By asking questions that you want me to answer, I answer them here on the TN 80s Hour Power Hour. Uh, but first, but first, it is Friday the 19th. Uh, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., I will be loading myself into my vehicle and driving four hours and 50 minutes to Blairstown, New Jersey for the Camp Crystal Lake tour, the filming location tour. So pumped, so excited. I'm going to go to Blairstown Diner first, which is the diner in the movie. Uh, if the cemetery location is close by, I'm going to do that too. There's a toy store that I want to hit up, courtesy of my man upstate, Johnny. And then 5.30, the, uh, at Camp uh, Nobi Skoku or something like that, uh, that's Camp Crystal Lake, the, um, the, the tour begins, and I, the, the, we get to eat a little bit, and then we get to watch the movie. Uh, and then I'm, and then, <laughs> and I'm going to bring you with me. I'm going to bring the camera, I'm going to get some footage, but, um, but, uh, um, I'm not staying over, and nobody knows that here. Don't tell any of the family members. They don't want me driving home at 11.30 at night. But the Holiday Inn is close by is $234 a night. Look, I, I've, I've, uh, money's not really the, the issue with that at all. Uh, but for $234, I'm going to be getting there at about 12 midnight or later, and then probably waking up at 7 and going home. I'm just going to take, I'm just going to make the drive. I'm just going to do the haul. I'm going to drive four hours and 50 minutes all the way back home, probably get back home around 4 a.m., 4.30 in the morning, and just sleep on Sunday. Uh, probably just a couple of hours. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to save the 230 bucks. I, I, that's a stupid price. $230 for a Holiday Inn Express is stupid. Um, this, I'm not doing that. That's a, $134 for a Holiday Inn Express. I'd be like, meh, okay. But $234? No. No. So anyway, I'll take you with me on the trip. We'll get some footage. Uh, you're going to drive home with me in the middle of the night uh, because I'll be scared and I want to talk to you guys. All right, uh, here's the questions. Let's get the questions going. Let's do it. Uh, John. No, that was back in June. That's not him. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, it is John. There was, a, there was another John. Uh, this is this is uh, this is not John. This is my man, my man Bale, my man Barry there in the UK. He's a big friend of the channel, often uh, an often commenter. Yes, an, uh, a frequent commenter, I believe, is the correct way to say it. Uh, good guy, good guy. Here's his questions. What was your first job? That's what I'm talking about. These are the kind of questions that I like to answer. I've been talking about toys for six, seven years on this channel. Let's talk about other stuff. He wants to know, uh, what was my first job? <clears throat> well, I remember very, 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 very early on, probably about 14, there was a company, and I don't know if you remember this, but there was a company that would drop off stuff for kids to go door to door and sell and it was like I remember a plastic mat with crayons that you could draw on I think there was some like peanut brittle in the box so like 
So, like, you would just take this box around town and bother your neighbors. And the company would just hire kids. And they would bring the boxes to your house and just drop them off. And you would try to go sell all this garbage door to door. I think there were knives, maybe. But I have no idea how... I, I, I don't know. But that's just a really weird early memory. My first real job was... Uh, I was a dishwasher at a place called the Moose Lodge, okay? I don't know if there are Moose Lodges in other parts of the country. I assume there are. But think about a, like an Elks Lodge type of deal, right? A, a senior citizen club hangout type place that was only open Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Wednesdays was buffet night. Fridays was fish. Saturdays was the big steak night. And I was the dishwasher. And I loved it. I absolutely loved that job. Um, we had, I had so much fun as a dishwasher at that job, especially on Saturday nights, because, like, you wouldn't have dishes to... It wasn't a restaurant. Like, they, they would eat there, but they'd all eat at the same time. So they'd, they'd all get their food at the same time, and then I'd get the dishes at the same, at, all at the same time. So for like two, three hours while they're eating and all that stuff, uh, there, were no, there was nothing to do, right? So I would get my meal cooked for me by the cook. And I would go sit in, like there was a back bar where nobody was. There was a front bar where everybody was hanging out. And then there was a back bar where nobody was. And I would go take my food and I would sit. And they had this massive, um, this massive... Uh, uh, what are they called? Projection screen TVs, right? This is 90... This is 95, maybe 94, guys. Um, they had this big projection screen TV, and I would watch WCW Saturday Night on it. Yeah, it, it was when Kurt Cobain died. Whatever year Kurt Cobain died, that was when I was working at that place because I saw it on the giant ugly projection screen television. I saw the MTV news update. But I would always watch WCW Saturday Night right there and uh, go like run back and forth doing dishes, go back, and it was great. Great. I'm going to give you long-winded answers because you fall asleep to me, so here we go. Uh, what was my favorite job? Well, I mean, that one's close. The Moose Lodge was close. I worked at Toys R Us for three days. Uh, that was not my favorite job. It should have been, but I wasn't. I wasn't then who I am now. So Toys R Us didn't mean anything to me back then. But I worked there for three days. Uh, they had me doing stock, not even stock. It wasn't stock at the time. It was you hung out in the back, you waited for a call over the um, like the PA to go get something from the back, usually a bigger item like a bike or a swing set or a sandbox, you know, something wasn't out on the floor. So a person would go to the cashier with a ticket uh, for like a bike and I'd have to like hunt it down. And it was awful. Like the girl on the thing would be like, uh, give me bike B479639er. And I'd be like, uh, what? I, I had no idea. So I quit. I was probably just 18 maybe and I quit favorite job I mean I can't really count anything in mental health that I've done I guess my self-employment is my favorite job because it's you know got so many benefits changed life so many different ways um, yeah I guess, <laughs> it's the dishwashing job at the moose lodge was my favorite job for many reasons if you could bring back one show what would it be if I could bring back one show I mean uh, pr um, probably something like Tales from the Dark Side or Tales from the Crypt or Twilight Zone like we don't have any we don't have any good nighttime HBO horror stuff. I know, like, uh, I know Shudder, the Shudder channel has, like, little half-hour things. Um, 
I think, uh, what was, I don't, remember, I don't know. I think that Shudder had a half hour horror show. I don't remember what it was called. But like Tales from the Crypt, I think would be cool. You know, if they just did like a half hour horror short. I, I would like that. You know, I wouldn't want like, I wouldn't want some of my old shows to come back today because they'd be awful. And all you got to think of is Roseanne, okay? Rose, you know, the Connors, I literally have not seen one episode. But from what I've heard, it's not the same show that it once was. And I don't, I don't have any interest in it. I think they brought back the Wonder Years, not going there at all. You can't, you can't take something as precious as the Wonder Years and bring it back. Um... So nothing, nothing, I wouldn't want anything to come back that I love so much because it'll get ruined, right? It'll just get ruined by, you know, agendas and blah, blah, blahs and whoosie, what's it's and so-and-sos. And I don't, I, I just want to be entertained. So, all right, what else? The biggest regret... A man, Barry, says, what's my biggest regret? Whew. Um, good gosh. I mean, I... Mm, look, you can't have... Whenever I start thinking about which way I should have turned, um... I feel like my I feel like it would like like the butterfly effect, right? I feel like if I make if I if I go back and make moves that I didn't make, how much of an effect would it have on life? And when I say life, I mean the kids, my two my two children. I always feel like if I say, "Oh, I should have gone here or I should have went to college a little earlier." If I went to college a little earlier, I would have never met the children's mother and I would not have my two kids. Uh, I wouldn't know them, obviously, but I wouldn't have them, and I don't want that. I don't even like to think about that. So I can't have regrets that would take me in another direction because I would miss out on the kids. So I can't say that, like, oh, you know, I wish my parents had stayed together because that would have taken me in a different direction. If my parents stayed married, I wouldn't have my children today because there's such a long line of dominoes where one led to the other, and if one didn't happen... I'd be over here. I wouldn't be over here. So we'll just keep it simple. Um, I, I wish that I knew more about cars, like changing oil or changing my brakes. Or I have no idea. I can barely get my hood open. Um, truth, I can barely get my hood open. I wish I'd learned that stuff. I wish I'd learned, like, you know, measuring and power tools and things like that. Uh, saws, you know, I wish that I had power saws and knew how to use them. <laughs> I wish, um, yeah, that, that, you know, I wish that I was more handy, you know, and knew how to do stuff instead of paying, you know, a boatload of money for somebody to do something that I could do for a tenth of the cost. But, what are you going to do? All right. Thanks, Bale. My man, Barry. Thank you very much. My man, Jason. Jason McClintock is sending a question. He says, uh, what's up, bud? Love the show. Gives me hope that the world can change by us just remembering the 80s. Agreed. That's why I do this. My question is, what was your first G.I. Joe that you ever got? Where did you get it? And then he tells a story of, of where he got his first G.I. Joe in Beloit, Michigan, or Beloit, Wisconsin. Well, his first was 84 Firefly. Look, I, I, I don't want to take a, a, an easy way out on these questions, but I have no idea. No idea. I'm going to say it was probably Christmas 84 because... I got the Sky Striker and the helicopter, the Dragonfly, 
Christmas of 84. How do I know that? Because I have the photos. I have photos of my little Christmas pile. And by little, I mean little. Um, I had a Crayola Caddy, of course. I had Merlin, the uh, red electronic game. And I could see in the picture the Firefly and the Sky Striker. So I would assume that, I, that that year I also got a couple of figures. I don't remember, and I can't see them in the package. So I guess technically we could say my first figures were the Dragonfly Pilot and the uh, Sky Striker Pilot Ace, I guess. Uh, but I'd say Christmas 84, Sky Striker, Dragonfly, and the figures that came with them were probably my first G.I. Joe figures. I don't know where they came from. Obviously, they came from Santa, but uh, I don't know what store had them. I don't. They just, uh, they weren't something, they weren't that important that I'd remember where and when. So, but I think that answers it. Dragonfly and Sky Striker and the figures that came with them were probably my first, according to that picture. So thank you, Jason, for the questions. Again, uh, if you have questions, we've got a few more. If you have questions, the show doesn't exist without questions. So as of right now, this is the last episode if we don't get a bunch more questions. So send them. The link is below. It's tn80rquestions at gmail.com. tn80rquestions at gmail.com. Link below. Okay. Uh, if you want to send a video question, please do. We'll put you on the channel, and you'll be famous. You'll get all the chicks. All right, my man E-Train, keeping it going. Ernie, hello, sir. He says, thank you for the great content. Thank you for thanking me for the great content. He's got five, six questions. Has the new 80s decor changed your viewing, gaming, filming, chilling experience? He's talking about this. Not yet, kind of. I have played more River Raid than I ever have down here. Uh, my, my kid has played more Atari than he ever has down here. I have not yet watched a movie. It is very much on my must-do list. Um, I did kind of move some stuff around and get a pillow down here and, and see what it would be like to watch the movie, and it's, it's okay. You know, it's, it's, the couch isn't huge, but I'm going to make it work. Um, I am going to watch a movie down here. But no, I, I have not, I did not usually spend my nights down here, um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to watch a movie down here uh, in the next, you know, week and maybe share it with you guys. Uh, in honor or shame, depending of your point of view, uh, of Vince McMahon's retirement, what is your favorite and least favorite 80s wrestling memory of Vince? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I look, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't have a ton of love for Vince McMahon. Um, I think he's one of those guys that made so much money that he felt like he could do whatever he wanted to anybody, and he did, and he got away with it a lot. Um, you know, the steroid trial, all the sex uh, abuse stuff, um... And now this, you know, hush money. Uh, do you have to be that kind of guy to go where he went and be as successful as he did? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so I don't know. Favorite Vince memory? Look, it's a culmination. It's 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 giving me my childhood in in eighty five, eighty four, eighty five, eighty six, and beyond. It's signing with LJN to make figures for me. Yes, for me, when I was a kid. Um, it's giving me that, that part of childhood. I, I will thank... If I met Vince McMahon, I would... Like, when I met Hogan, I said, you are my whole childhood. And he said, bah. <laughs> but if I met Vince McMahon, I would say the same thing. You, you are my childhood, Vince McMahon. That doesn't mean that I you know, think he's a good guy. Uh, my least favorite McMahon memory is when he changed wrestling 
with one little interview when he, um, I don't know if it was the ushering in of the Attitude Era or what, but it was right before the Mr. McMahon character, and he came out and he did the interview, and it was just him talking, and I remember the line specifically when he was basically saying, you know, we have been... And this is this is why I can't stand. First of all, if you want to if you want to really hate him, watch watch him with Bob Costas, and just be like, you know what, Vince, you old man. Somebody should have just smacked him in the mouth because he's such a he's such a tough guy, arrogant. Ah, oh, watch the Bob Costas interview. You'll hate Vince McMahon. But I remember, like, he would just stand there in this interview, and he's like, "We've been challenging your intelligence for a long time." Blah blah blah. I'm paraphrasing, you know. You guys don't believe in the concept of good guys versus bad guys. And he would just do this over-the-top idiot Vince voice. And so basically he was saying, good guys and bad guys, that's no more. That's gone. And now we're just going to do, you know, we're not going to insult your intelligence anymore by talking about good guys and bad guys. And that was the end of kayfabe. Uh, WWF, anyways. And I just hated that interview. And I, I thought, I, I felt like he took the entire, you know, 70s and 80s and just crumpled them up and threw them away with that good guys versus bad guys line. Hate him for that. Hate him for that. Uh, do you think Gino Hernandez's death was a hit job? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> uh, I did watch the uh, the Vice show on him, or Dark Side of the Ring, I think. I don't know. Whatever it was. The Gino Hernandez special. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of shady stuff going on uh, back then. Especially when you're dealing with money and coke and um, whatever. Uh, hit? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Do you plan to revisit any of the early 80s comedy sitcoms like Cheers, Taxi, WKRP, and MASH? Why or why not? Um, probably not those. those. Those ones never meant much to me as a kid. I, I, I never liked any of them. I remember watching Taxi really late at night during the summer when I was like 12 it was on the Fox affiliate at like 12:30 at night, and I would just watch it because not because I because I had three you know six three channels or whatever um, in this particular house apartment that we were living in. I had a TV down in the basement where I slept, uh, but there was no cable hooked up to it. I'm probably 12, 13 years old, and that summer I would stay up very late, and I'd watch Love Connection, <laughs> and then uh, Family Feud. And then I think right after that was Taxi. So that's my only experience with that show. I didn't like Cheers. I, I know there's so many people that are that like can't believe that. That I that I don't like Cheers. I don't like Cheers. I don't like Ted Danson. I, I don't like I mean Woody Harrelson's okay. I don't like the characters. I don't like Norm. I don't like Cliff. I don't like Ted Danson. I don't like that little little uh, Danny DeVito fellow. Wait, is he in Cheers? No, he's in Taxi. His wife's in Cheers, right? I don't know. I don't know. WKRP I never saw. It sounds like a decent concept, the radio station. Maybe I'll check that out at some point. MASH, I kind of feel I have to. I feel like I have to. Uh, so, yeah, I think at some point MASH will probably... I just have so many shows to watch. I really have so many shows. Um, maybe MASH, maybe WKRP. The other two, no. Uh, what's your favorite ho 80s Halloween memory? Uh, probably just the... I don't know if I have a specific Halloween that stands out more than any others. I just think the 80s Halloween in general was um, different and awesome. Um, you know, it, it meant it, it was fun. You know, uh, I would go out with my sisters, we'd get a pillowcase, that was our bag, a pillowcase, and we'd fill it up. And uh, then we would come home, and we treated the candy as if it were priceless gold. We would, uh, we would hoard it, we would put it in a bowl, or leave it in the, in the um, 
pillowcase, and then we would like take it to our room, and I would lock it down. I think it. I, I think like I dug a hole in my floor and put the candy in there, and then like covered it up with you know carpet or something. Like I had to hide the candy. We all hid our candy from. And then and then like six months later, you go to get some candy, and all that's left are Tootsie Rolls, man. All that's left are Tootsie Rolls and Smarties. That's it. But just, just Halloween in general as a kid was special. I think my kids, I think we do it pretty good for the kids. They have a good time. They, they, they do. That's, that's a ho- that and Christmas are holidays that I made sure um, didn't lose any of their luster. And the kids love Halloween. Um, and we have a good time. So I, I think just in general, I think just, just the vibe in general. The Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown is a lovely lovely Halloween memory. Uh, back in the 80s, all of the all of the, the primetime television shows would have a spooky episode or a Halloween themed episode. I thought that was cool. Like, I remember MacGyver doing a Halloween themed, like, ghost episode or whatever. That was cool. Um, you know, just, it meant more. You know, television shows in primetime would also cater to Halloween. Uh, I love that. You know, I'm watching the growing pains right now, and it always seems to be snowing in, 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 during the growing pains. Like, they're always doing Christmas-themed episodes. I love that. And finally, he says, what's your favorite Saturday morning cartoon? Uh, think Desert Island scenario. You can only take one. All right, that's a good... That, that spins the question a little bit. Because if it's desert, deserted island, uh, I want substance, right? So I want, like... I want a show that's like not just, you know, my pet monster or popples or pound puppies or something. So it would, you know, it'd have to be something like G.I. Joe, uh, the Transformers, maybe the real Ghostbusters, you know, for Saturday mornings. If I if I was taking it with me on a deserted island and needed to be entertained, I think I would go with a little bit more of a of a um, plot based show uh, like G.I. Joe, Transformers, Ghostbusters, um, you know, Mask, something like that. Yeah. All right. Next up, finally, finally, uh, Mike, my man Mike from Montreal says, when will you be coming back to Montreal? Would love to get some drinks. Okay. P.S. Love the show. Where are the 80s comics? All right. So Montreal... Uh, I got married in Montreal and spent a week there on a uh, honeymoon, I suppose. Uh, and we stayed at the uh, Lowe's Vogue uh, Hotel on Rue de la Montagne. Rue de la Montagne. Yeah, that's right. That's this. How about that? Rue de la Montagne. The uh, street, the, that is the name of the street. And we, uh, and we uh, had a good time. And I love Montreal, and I love Canada in general. Uh, are we going to come back to Montreal? I mean, probably, maybe, at some point, if we celebrate an anniversary of some kind. I don't know. I'd like to bring the kids back to Montreal. Right now, Canada is being a little, little you know, pissy with their uh, border stuff. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you got to fill out to, to go to Canada. That's why I didn't go to the Niagara Falls Comic Con. You need, uh, I forget what it's called, uh, something like Enter Canada app on your phone. You got to upload all these dates of, of vaccinations and, and boosters. And I have all that, but I don't, I don't want to go looking for it. I don't know where the dates are. They're somewhere. And you got to do all this for myself. You got to do this for the kids. Uh, the kids only have one shot. I, I, I don't remember if they got boosters or not. I think they got a booster. I don't know, but it's like, come on, Canada. You're, you're making it really difficult for people just because I have a shot in a booster doesn't mean I'm not getting COVID. I think we already know that by now with the COVID deal. So the, the, the vaccination two years ago, it doesn't matter when I'm entering Canada. So cut it out, Canada, or else I can't come back to Montreal. If I do, Mike, yeah, beers, beers are on you, my friend. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, come on. Uh, he says, where are the 80s comics? I, I, I was never, ever, ever a fan. Uh, just, uh, well, first of all, reading has never appealed to me <laughs> at all. But I, I, I never liked comics. I have probably about 50 G.I. Joe comics. 
just because I started buying them when I was collecting G.I. Joe figures, or as I'm collecting G.I. Joe figures, would I like to complete uh, the G.I. Joe collection for comics? Sure. Sure. Uh, I have the first one. Um, not Probably not the original first one that might sell for a lot. I probably got a reprint or something, but um, I just never liked comics. I never did. And I know they're huge, and I know people love them. I just, I just never loved them. So, all right, that's uh, that's another episode of the TN Eighties R Power Hour. Uh, let's see if we went a uh, close to an hour. I don't know what we did. What did we do? Uh, Thirty minutes. All right, so it's like a half hour. Um, give me more questions. That's it. That this is the end of the TN Eighties R Power Hour. The show's over. It's canceled because I don't have any more questions. So. Uh, if you like the concept, you got to send me questions. The link down below is to the email. Get your questions to me. We'll give you a shout-out on the air. If you have anything that you want me to promote, pimp, uh, let me know. you got a YouTube channel you want me to talk about? Send it with your question. you got a business that you want me to talk about? Send me a free sample, and I'll talk about it on the channel. Uh, you want to say hi to your sister? Give me your name and we'll say hi to your sister on the channel. So send me your questions, send me your promotion, send me your pimping, send me your uh, your landscaping business that you'd like to talk about or like me to talk about, and I'll do all that for you. Get the questions at TN80SR Power Hour now, uh, TN80R questions at gmail.com. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for showing interest for two episodes. If you want more, you got to send the questions. We're going to Camp Crystal Lake tomorrow, and you're coming with me. That's all. Good night, man.